The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning to everybody. So this morning we've got kind of an interesting gospel. Um, There's an expression that you'll see pop up several times throughout the gospels, and it has to do with the fact that when Jesus speaks, he speaks with power. Uh, And we see two different ways that he does so in this gospel. First of all, it says he's in Capernaum, which is kind of was his headquarters of operations uh, during most of his public ministry. And he's, it's a Sabbath, so he's preaching. But it says, the people were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. Now, when Jesus spoke with authority, it doesn't just mean that he was just a great preacher. It's not like, wow, that was a powerful sermon by Jesus. It actually means something else. It means that, historically, the scribes and the Pharisees, when they would preach, uh, they were literally lawyers, doctors of the law, So they would build their arguments, like a legal argument, built on precedence. So, first of all, kind of most most foundationally would be like the law of Moses, so they would refer to Exodus or Deuteronomy or something like that. And then they would back up their arguments on a whole series of what all the other previous commentators have had, just as Rabbi Gamaliel said when he was commenting on, you know, Exodus 8, 14, or whatever the particular case may be. So they would build up and give themselves authority by kind of building on this ongoing living tradition, which is something that in Catholic circles we also do with theology and whatnot. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus came out and said things that were really shocking, like, you have heard Moses say, um, love your your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, Jesus was claiming for himself authority greater than Moses, greater than anybody else. He spoke on his own authority. Nobody ever did that before. When the prophets would speak before, it was always very clear. This is God speaking through me. And a lot of the times the prophets were kind of almost forced to think, say things that they didn't really like saying because it was inconvenient to them personally but the word of God had to come out. Um, and, Moses, and God would make it clear that, okay, this is God speaking. This is not Moses. This is not Elijah or whatever. This inspiration came from God. So God would make it very clear. The distinction between the human agent and the divine voice that is speaking. In Jesus, that didn't happen. Jesus just simply said, I am here to tell you, fill in the blank, on his own authority. And he spoke with a conviction and a power and an eloquence that nobody else spoke about. Also, he would speak in a way that, you know, for example, no prophet would ever dare to start talking about God as his father, to start talking about what heaven is like, to talk about the angels, to talk about all those uh, the kingdom of God is like. They wouldn't dare to do it because they had no knowledge of it. But Jesus spoke with familiarity about heaven and the things of God. It would be kind of like if one of you decided, I'm going to take a trip to Phoenix, Arizona, and somebody starts asking me, hey, what are things like in Rye? Well, you can speak with authority. 
you know the town of Rye. You can say, hey, look, there's this great deli. You know, I go over to Jerry's sometimes, and they've got this great buffalo wrap, you know, and that's my go-to, and et cetera, et cetera. You know Rye. You can speak with absolute conviction and authority, and, and your word has clout because you know it. Secondly, and even more astonishingly, is the following. In the synagogue, there's a man with an unclean demon. And immediately he cries out, what do you have to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? And it says, Jesus rebuked him and says, be quiet, come out of him. And the amazing thing is, it worked. It worked. Now, did the Jewish people have exorcists? Yes, they did. They were nowhere near as successful as Jesus. It didn't always work, but sometimes it did. Now, how a Jewish exorcism would work back in the day was they would just pretty much bombard the possessed person with the different titles of God and names of God and remind him of all the different glorious things God has done. And they would be constantly for hours on end invoking the names and titles and the glory of the God Almighty. And after a while, the demon that's inside the person just couldn't handle it anymore and would take off, okay? Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus just basically says, hey, you, out of there, gone. On his own authority. He didn't invoke anybody. He didn't invoke God the Father. He just said, I tell you, get out. And he did immediately. So, what does this practically have to do with you and me? Well, the reality is this. The Word of God, the Word of Christ, is recorded in sacred scripture, and as St. Paul says, it is living and active. And therefore, Christ's living word has the same power for you and me today if we let it. So here comes the homework, okay? We all got to start checking ourselves. Number one, if it is true that God's living word is powerful and effective today, <coughs> and I can allow that word to have power in my life, okay, the first thing I would say is this. How often and how much time do, I, do we spend prayerfully reading and meditating on the Word of God? You know, for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before Mass, after Mass, something like that. Do I every day at least read a little snippet from the Gospels and spend a few moments praying over it, asking God to enlighten me, asking God to apply this to my life, asking God to speak to me through His living Word? Because his word is living and active, and if we let it, it will change our hearts. You may or may not feel anything. That's not the important part. The important part is that we prayerfully come to the word of God, and we don't judge the word of God. We let ourselves be judged by the word of God. It is the standard that we conform our lives to. We don't try to judge God's word and say, well, I like this part, but this part I don't really agree with. Okay. And that's the second thing. How, uh, what is my attitude towards when the Word of God, either in sacred scripture or sometimes in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, because God has given his teaching authority to the church through the bishops and the Pope, when the church or when sacred scripture says something that I don't like, or is not comfortable, or that makes me have to start looking at my life in a different way, what is my attitude? Every generation, every generation, there will always be something in sacred scripture that is annoying. It's supposed to cost us, okay? Um, but the saints are people who allow themselves to be changed by God's word and not vice versa. They don't go around trying to change what Christ taught just because it doesn't feel right or they, it's, it's inconvenient or it's embarrassing or any of the things that could very well be true. And the third one I forgot, so you're going to have a shorter homily. So there you go. At least you have two takeaways. Do I pray with the word of God every day? And what is my attitude when the Word of God challenges me, when the, ch when the ch church's teaching magisterium challenges me? So, 
Let us allow God's word to transform us and know that if we do, it can make us into saints. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.